Hey guys, welcome to this new video. Today we're doing a little mental psychology video. Um, this is how to deal with stress in the most important points of the match. Now this video was given to me by an idea that one of you guys had. You can see the comment right here. Um, and this just goes to show you guys, in any video you can comment anything, anything you'd like to see me make in terms of videos or, or any other content. And as of now, I mean that the channel's not blown up yet. If it ever will, um, then maybe it'll be a little more difficult. But as of now, you can comment anything, any request, and there's a very good chance that I might make a video like that or regarding that type of stuff. So as we know, matches in Pro Tennis are won in just a few points. Those little key points in each set, each game, 30 all, you know, there's a very small margin between players. Um, maybe one will win 51% or one will win uh, 49 and stuff like that. So it really comes down to those big points. And if you play tennis, you know what we're talking about. And being able to play those points freely and without stress is the key to win again. I mean, it goes without saying if I'm gonna be tight and kind of have my arm very stiff during those points, then there's not a good chance that I'm gonna win them. So, so I'm gonna walk you through how to get the best chance possible to win these points and some of the rituals and things I do that help me a lot. So first of all, before giving you any tip, I think we need to understand how do we play these important points? Because a lot of coaches will say, stay solid, don't miss and stuff like that, which frankly, as the level gets higher, it doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. I think for me and in general, I think for every player, what every player should strive to do is in those points, put yourself in the spot where you have an advantage, which doesn't mean necessarily lead the rally, but get to where you have an advantage. How are you winning most points in the match? Where is your opponent's biggest weakness? If I can make a point from scratch to try and win it, where would I put myself? In what position? And that's exactly the mindset you need to have going in. Basically, when do you win the most points and how? And that's what you need to try and replicate. If you're an attacking player, that probably means something like approach and come forwards when the chance is right. You know, no rushing, no trying to overdo it or, or get out of the rally by hitting an impossible down the line winner. But if there's a chance, if there's a short ball that on any other point you would go forwards, you need to do the same thing and not be scared and play um, stiff or try to do something different. If you're a strong baseliner and break him down the back end, and that's what you've been doing the whole match and that's how you've been winning the most points, then, you know, whether with your serve or with your return, get yourself as soon as possible in the position where you're in that inside out rally to try and break him down to the back end. And that's what you need to do. It doesn't, it's not just stay solid or don't miss. It's do what you're best at and what's winning you the most points throughout that match against that specific opponent. Let's take this point here, for example. There's 6 4, 4 3, 30 all. So, pretty tight point in one of the, my most important matches in my college year. Making a first serve helps. And as you can see, I'm immediately trying to move him, being aggressive with my forehand. Now, that's because I win most points by being aggressive and finding a way forwards. That doesn't mean you have to do the same. You have to do whatever throughout the match wins you the most points and what you're best at. He makes the back and cross, but it lands on the service line. And I know it's my chance to get forward. I don't wait or I just try to make it. I go for the shot I would just like in any other situation. And the end result is me taking home the point. Obviously, if I'm returning, it's gonna be a little more difficult for me to get ahead in the rally like that. But the most important thing here is don't change the way you would play a shot because of the score. If I get a form from inside the court, I know I would hit a big approach and come forwards nine times out of 10. Maybe one time I drop shot, but in general, that's what I do. And if I do something different or modify the pace or be scared to miss it, that's just not gonna pay off. Right, so now we know how to play these points. Points. And now there comes the part where we have to deal with the stress that comes with them. So preparing for that point, what we think during the point and that stuff, that's the next step. But the first step, as I said, is learning how to play these points. So the first step I will give you is take time. You have 20 seconds in between each point. And a lot of the time, especially in these situations, it's a good idea to take the entire time. Even if momentum might be on your side, it's good to take that time and reflect and make sure you're 100% ready for the next point. I personally use all the time, almost every point, just to recover physically and mentally. And let me get specific on how myself and many players use exactly this time to make the most of it and reset and play the best point next. After the point is done, it is likely that you'll think about the point you just played. So what do you do is you take three or four seconds to think about it as you're walking back to the towel or the fence or whatever. While you're drying yourself or catching your breath, that will be your neutral moment where you have to turn your mind off for a few seconds. That will help take off some of the pressure. And finally, when you're walking back to the serve or the return, those are the seconds you're gonna visualize how to play the next point and what you wanna do exactly. This will get you pumped and you already have forgot the point before. You're gonna have to practice this in, in practice points and in practice sets so that when you're going to a match, it becomes a routine and you don't even think about it, but that's what you're doing naturally. The next tip actually comes from Coach Life. And if you know about it, it's an amazing tennis platform which features junior coaches from the most successful pros on tour today, like Tommy Paul, Francis Tiafo, 
Jack Draper, Taylor Fritz, and many, many more. You can even imagine. Coach Life is an all-in-one platform with over 400 videos in 25 categories, teaching you everything that's important in the game of tennis. And the best part is you'll get to learn shots and on-court tricks as they've been taught to these pros by their exact coaches. Among foreigns, backhand serves, and all parts of tennis, Coach Life actually has many other categories, such as nutrition, strength and conditioning, recovering, and they're all tennis specific. There's also a great psychology section where I got this next tip from. And if you want to learn more about how to become mentally unbreakable on the court, you should definitely check out Coach Life. There's currently a seven day free trial promotion right now, so there's really no reason to not check it out and at least try it. You can click the first link in the bio to access that. So this next value tip is have a high level of acceptance. You have to have some level of acceptance. Okay, this happened. I can't change what happened. The only thing I can do is do my best from now on. It's like accepting something happened instead of getting angry at it. If you get angry at something, I don't know, you drop your ice cream, you get angry. The ice cream is not gonna come back in your hand. You're just gonna lose time and lose emotional energy. And in that case, it's fine. But in a tennis match, especially before a big point, it's not good. That will give you better decision-making and less stress. The third tip is actually something I'm still working on, but it's kind of one of the obvious but hard ones that every player tries to do, but there's some situations where they kind of were not able to do so, let's say, and that is to just focus on the factors that you can control. So easy and sometimes even true, to be honest, to think about, okay, he's been lucky or this win. You keep thinking about these factors that realistically, like you can't change. Yes, they're annoying. Yes, they might have some influence on the match, but you thinking about them is you wasting energy and you wasting time and taking that time and energy away from the things you should be thinking about. You should be thinking about the things you can control only, such as where am I gonna serve? What am I gonna do in this point? That's the stuff you should be thinking about. And I know sometimes it's not easy and I do it myself as well. So it happens, but you need to try your best to focus on the things you can control. And that's the only way you can lower your stress levels. The last tip is another hard one, especially to maintain at all times, even pros, but it's to have positive self-talk and translate that into confident body language. Body language which is super important because it shows your opponent what you're really thinking. Realistically, it's really hard to tell yourself after a point how much you suck and then go out and play the point and have positive body language where you look pumped and excited for the next point after you told yourself you suck. That's 99% of the time, that's not possible. And yes, it's gonna be impossible to be positive after some really bad misses. And that's not always, again, you can't do it always, but in those cases, you have to at least try and be neutral. Especially in those big moments, you know, show some confidence through your body language. And you'll soon realize that telling yourself you're ready and confident will actually make you ready and confident and not stress to play in those big points. And the last aspect about it, which is important, is in those big points, you don't wanna give any confidence to your opponent. So the least you can do is if you have body language, you're taking away confidence from yourself and directly giving it to your opponent because he sees you but that's the last aspect of it as to why you can't carry yourself in a negative way so that was it from my side thank you guys for watching um, these are things that are practical you can go out and do them right now today like step by step and uh, yeah let me know if you want to see some other tennis psychology related video or anything else about how to how to act in a certain way before a match or how to deal with after the match or before the match or anything like that and and stay tuned because next week there's a big video coming out where we're playing for a conference title so make sure you go ahead and watch that